It is the first clear night in ages, and I just got home from work, and I am scrambling so that I can take a picture of one of my favorite targets in the winter night sky. You won't want to miss this one. Today we will be photographing the Orion Nebula, the king of the winter night sky, and one of the objects that I like to call part of the big three for astrophotography. What makes them the big three is they are the biggest and brightest and easiest targets to photograph, especially for amateur astrophotographers. These are the Orion Nebula, the Pallades Star Cluster, and the Andromeda Galaxy. I find that these three targets are a good way to measure your progress in this hobby. They're the targets you come back to every year so you can see the kind of progress you've made since the last time that you photographed it. Every year I go in with the mentality of improving on last year's image and trying to bring out something new and dynamic that I haven't been able to do before. My Orion Nebula photo last year, I'll have to admit, was a bit of a letdown. It looked very similar to my Orion Nebula photo from the previous year. And that was mostly because I hadn't changed my equipment during that time. I thought I had made so many improvements to my image processing and other acquisition skills that I should see a better result. But in the end, it looked pretty similar. This year is different though. I think I can come up with something very dynamic and unlike anything I've done before because I have new technology and equipment at my disposal. This little guy right here, this is the ace up my sleeve. This is the ASI 2600 MC Pro dedicated astronomy camera. And this will allow me to photograph hydrogen alpha wavelengths of light like I've never done before. So I should be able to reveal details in the Orion Nebula that I haven't been able to in previous years. Making progress is about more than just equipment though. You have to be working on the other skills in the hobby to see that progress as well. So I've been working on my image processing, data acquisition, and I'll also be pouring on a lot of exposure time to try and make this my best Orion Nebula image to date. Now, if you saw my last video, you'd see that I used an HA RGB style composite image to photograph the California Nebula. And I'll be taking what I learned from that experience and applying it to this project as well. So same idea taking duo narrowband exposures as well as RGB exposures and trying to combine the two of them in the most dynamic way possible. The Orion Nebula is the type of target that can really benefit from an HA RGB style process. It is both an emission nebula and a reflection nebula, so it has those strong hydrogen components in it, but it also has fine details in RGB that are equally as important. I find the RGB images to be the most beautiful when it comes to the Orion Nebula, so I'll be trying to emphasize that as much as possible in my final image. But at the end of the day, there are fine details in dust and hydrogen that I just can't pass up with the duo narrowband. So I've got to take those two and I got to put them together. Astrophotography in the wintertime can be a bit chaotic. By the time I get home from work, the sun is already setting and I'm just running around trying to put everything together. On top of that, not to mention the cold, the snow, the wind, it really is an experience. The weather in New England can be crazy. Just last weekend, we had temperatures of negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit with wind chills at negative 30. I have been living in this area my entire life and those are the coldest temperatures I have ever seen. Oh yeah, and to top it all off, the next day it was almost 50 degrees outside, so you really never know what to expect around here. The issue with photographing the Orion Nebula from my location is there's a very small gap between my house and the trees that I have in my yard. It's about three to four hours of imaging time that I can get on a single night if conditions are perfect. I think at this point I photographed the Orion Nebula maybe five or seven times, but this will be my last imaging session before I sit down and process my image. All right, it's dark, it's cold, and there's a lot of anticipation that comes with photographing one of the big three, at least for me. So I'm ready to get going and take some pictures and make my best Orion Nebula photo ever. Let's do it.
All right, I'm back inside. I'm slightly less frozen, and I want to talk about the imaging plan tonight a little bit. And I think Leo wants to join us too. As I mentioned, this project will be a combination of both RGB and duo narrowband exposures, and tonight I'll be working on those duo narrowband exposures. These are 10 minute sub exposures at gain 100 using my ASI 2600 MC Pro dedicated astronomy camera and the Optolong L Ultimate duo narrowband filter. These two together have been a great combination for me, and I've been going after all sorts of wide field nebula targets since I purchased them. This is probably my third or fourth night capturing duo narrowband exposures of the Orion Nebula, so it should be a pretty healthy amount of data to try and get some of these faint details in the hydrogen and dust around this target. I've set my sensor temperature to negative 20 degrees Celsius, which is very easy to achieve on these cold winter nights. This helps eliminate the thermal noise on the sensor and improve the overall quality of the data we're collecting and ultimately results in a nicer image. This whole process from image sequencing, auto guiding, finding and framing the target with GoTo, all of this is being run through my ASIR Plus Wi-Fi controller and it is a piece of cake. If you're someone who struggles with technology or you find that the astrophotography software that you're using is unreliable, the ASIR should be your first stop for simplifying your process. I've been using this wonderful little red box for several months now, and honestly, I don't think I could ever go back. It may not be the best, most accurate software out there, but it is certainly the most user-friendly. And having access to your entire imaging rig from your cell phone is something that no one else can really provide. I'm all over the place. I can be in the kitchen, on the couch, in the bed, out in the yard, in the garage. Doesn't matter. I have constant access to my deep space imaging equipment. It honestly sounds crazy to say. Also, it's nice, particularly with projects like these, where there's such a small window to photograph it that once that window has closed, I can simply pick a new target from my phone and I don't even have to go outside. I've been using the system for months and the convenience is just unbelievable. I highly recommend it, especially to people who are just getting started in astrophotography. One of the hurdles I experienced early on was finding the right software and reliable software to automate my image sequencing. The ASI Air has that totally covered. The night is just getting started and we have a lot of data acquisition ahead of us and I'm really excited to see what this final result looks like. So with the magic of YouTube, I'm gonna bring you over to a little bit of the image processing side. I mentioned earlier that I had to photograph this project over several nights and actually it ended up being 10 different nights. I photographed seven nights using duo narrowband when the moon was bright and three nights using RGB during the new moon phases. I want to give you guys a quick look at how I organize all that data over here on my computer. So you can see here within the Orion Nebula, I have a few different folders. One is the L Pro, which is my RGB filter. The other is the L Ultimate, which is my duo narrowband filter. And then I have some processing stuff here, which I'll get to later. Within the L Pro folder, you can see that I have three different nights worth of images taken here. And within each of these, I have broken it out into my light frames and my flat frames for that session. Flat frames are the only calibration frame that I take with every imaging session. And the others I use a library that I've built up over time for my camera. If you want to learn more about calibration frames, I've done a whole video on it and I'll include the link here above. These other files that you're seeing in this folder, primarily the one called autosave, is the output of Deep Sky Stacker. So I've already actually stacked all of these images and I've begun my image processing. Over here in the L Ultimate folder, you can see I have my seven nights of imaging from earlier this year. This is the same deal with these. Every individual imaging session, I have broken my lights and flats apart from each other. And I just like to keep things in these folders to have it all nice and organized to make the process easier when I go over into Deep Sky Stacker and load everything in. If you're wondering how to stack images from multiple nights in Deep Sky Stacker, I'll give you a quick rundown of that now. Now, images taken with different filters and different exposure lengths can't be combined together in Deep Sky Stacker. That means I have to independently stack my RGB images, which were three minute exposures, and my duo narrowband images, which are 10 minute exposures. But as long as you're using the same filter, same settings and same exposure length, then you can stack them all together in one image, which I'll show you now. It's quite simple. The first thing you wanna do, click on open picture files, and you can see that I'm already in my Orion Nebula L Ultimate folder from February 8th. So I will just select all of these light frames and I will open them. Now for dark files, I actually have a calibration frames library, which I alluded to earlier and I can simply take my master dark frame that matches the settings of my images. Next, I'll grab the flat files. I want to make sure that I am taking them from the same date that I took my light files, and that's why it's nice to have these organized in this way. So I go to February 8th, I go to flats, and I can select all of these. Next are the bias files, which once again, I have a library for, so I can just go ahead and select my master offset file here. So this is essentially everything you need to do for a single night of imaging. Now, if you're going to combine multiple nights of imaging, it's not so clear, but it's also very easy. You come down to this grouping tab here in the bottom and you click group one. This has opened a new group with no images in it. And this is where you will put your images from the next night. 
but simply navigate to another night, grab all the light files here, and do the same process. There you have it. That's how you combine multiple nights of images in Deep Sky Stacker. All you do is your standard Deep Sky Stacker process now where you check them all and you register them and you go ahead and execute the stack. Now my preferred settings for Deep Sky Stacker, I almost always follow the recommended settings and I always use a number somewhere between 90 and 100% for selecting the best images. This really depends on the quality of your images and how well you've sifted through them to remove any bad images from your stack. So things with star trails or stray light and all that I've already removed. So I like to take at least the best 90% of my stack. So here in recommended settings, you can see that I'm already following all the recommended settings. They do recommend a different stacking method, but I am using one that is already recommended and one that I like. The Sigma clipping method will actually remove satellites and planes from your images during your stack, which is really great because I don't have to throw those images out. So this is my preferred method of stacking. After you've got this all set to your liking, you can just hit the OK button and you can come in here and it will show you a summary of what it's about to stack. If this is all green and it's not yelling at you about, oh, your calibration frames have different exposure lengths or different settings than your lights. Um, as long as this looks all set, then you're good to go and you can begin stacking. The final product of stacking in Deep Sky Stacker often doesn't look that impressive. You can see here that, yes, you can tell it's the Orion Nebula, but really it doesn't look like all that much. There is some of the detail of the core and you can tell that the trapezium itself has been totally blown out, but hiding in this data is something magnificent and you guys will have to wait to the end to see it. Before we get to the image reveal, I wanted to say just a couple more things about the Orion Nebula. It really can't be overstated just how impressive this object is. It is an extremely bright star forming region in the constellation Orion and can be seen with the naked eye under almost any amount of light pollution. The Orion Nebula is one of the few naked eye visible nebula in general, but its brightness is unmatched. To locate this object, you need to find Orion's belt in the night sky and simply look just below it. It'll be a faint fuzzy patch, but in there is a level of detail that is just incredible. The Orion Nebula is more than just beauty though. It's also an area of scientific research. NASA has frequently studied this area and its star forming regions to help inform our own understanding about the formation of our solar system. It's pretty cool. If you've never seen the Orion Nebula before, I encourage you to go out and look at it because it's almost gone and won't be back until next winter. But if you want to see the Orion Nebula up close and personal, I've got you covered. Here it is.